when I first started this channel, it was all about the red camera. Those of you that have been with me a long time know that the channel used to be called the red camera because I had a Nikon entry level DSLR and it was red, lovely red camera. Now I've dabbled in the two or three years I've been doing this, maybe four now, with film cameras, with compact cameras, with the iPhone, making comparisons, all of those kind of things. And as of late, I've been using the compact camera more and more and more, and it's ideal for the street photography lark. But I thought, you know, I've not used this in such a long time. So this video, what I'm planning is a sunrise and a sunset. I've done one before where I've done two sunrises and two sunsets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to the north coast. I'm thinking Whitstable. Catch the sun setting. It was a glorious sunset last night, so it should be good tonight. And then tomorrow, I'm going to get up at 4.30 a.m. because it's summer. And if you want to catch the sunrise, you've got to get up early in the summer. And then I'll go to the south coast, and I'm thinking St. Margaret's Bay, maybe somewhere along there, or up on the cliffs by the um, Dover Patrol Memorial. And we'll catch a sunrise. So, let me drive to Whitstable, and then we'll... um carry on from there a little longer than a few minutes later i tell you what i've missed this just being by the sea listen to that doing my photo challenges doing my motor racing <laughs> it kind of takes it out of here so i've made it down here you can see the sun is setting sadly there's cloud there's always cloud isn't there but it might light up the sky so i'm gonna stick with it you never know and what I've got, I've got the um, end of the pier as a foreground interest. Might have to do some bracketing shots to bring out the lightness. Could be good. I took a couple of shots of the lads jumping as I, I, I arrived. So have a look at those pictures quickly while I set up for a couple of shots here. So this is my scene. I'm, I'm not going to go for anything more spectacular than the sun is setting directly in that direction. And I'll take some shots with the, with the pier. If the cloud wasn't there, then I would have kind of like a shaft of light. Oh, it's clearing up. So it might be a case, case of several shots just to get different aspects of the sun, sunset. I was driving home yesterday, I can't remember where I was, but um, the sky was just red everywhere. It was amazing. And I thought, you know what, let's just do a photo session of sunsets and sunrises. So I'll go into manual priority and that way I can manage everything on the So many things to do because I took a shot earlier you've got to reset everything you see don't want the auto exposure the exposure compensation playing up so I can give myself f11 can't I there's nothing really in the foreground by the time I take the shot it's the pier so I let f11 50th of a second let's see what it gives us couple of people on the or kids on the pier not bad not bad might be able to bring out the highlights 
I'm going to push it to F11. It slows the shutter speed down, but you know what? I'm on the tripod, so... Yeah, it gives me nice. I'm not even straight on the horizon. <laughs> Who's got time for doing all of that, faffing about? <laughs> okay, so I'll take this one shot. No, just just one slight adjustment, two seconds later, hazy sunshine. Have that shot while I wait for the sun to really drop, see if we can get some spectacular shots. Sadly, as you can see, the sun is dipping right behind the cloud, and I don't think I'm going to get the dynamic shot that I want. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place the end of the pier, like so, smack in the middle of the shot, with the sun on the right, and then I'm going to zoom in. So two shots, I think, and then we'll let the glory of tomorrow's sunrise. It always happens when I'm talking to camera, doesn't it? Popsy dogs. I'm a cat lover. Don't do dogs. <laughs> right, I'm bringing the aperture down to f7.1. It is supposed to be the sweetest aperture for this lens. So I'm going to get a couple of shots here. No one on the pier. I'm going to take three shots. We're going in at 18mm. That gets me the beach and the foreground. Then I'm coming in roughly at about 50mm. But I'll confirm that with the metadata on the shot because the sun's disappearing and there's nothing I can do about that. You, you, you take your chances, don't you? giving me some nice washes. That was nice, but what I'm going to do is a quick pano to get more of the um, more of the end of that island. I think it's the Isle of Grain. That's that shot. Now I'm going to just zoom in, get the colours of the sky with a seagull. I wasn't ready for that. I got it. I got the seagull. I didn't do the two-timer. Two-timer. <laughs> Sounds like a love affair thing, doesn't it? Three shots. Can I make something of that? I think it's just the sky that I wanted. I'm not going to get the sunrise, sunset. Mm -mm -mm. I do wonder if I'm, if it's worth waiting. Sometimes you come out for a, sh a photo shoot, and if it doesn't go the way that you plan. You kind of just give up, don't you? And that is par for the course. Sometimes your shots will be blinders, and other times they won't be anything at all. Okay, what I'm seeing, you've got the sun, and you've got this pier. I'm going to stand just a bit up here and try and get the sun directly behind the pier, like so. What do you think? Get a shot like that. That gives me the sky. I think that'll be nice. Let me go and get my camera. <laughs> Left it down there. With all this shingle beach. Oh, the dog's going crazy. 
This is what I've got. I think it looks lovely. Let's pull you around here. I was saying Shingle Beach, but it's actually a beach full of oyster shells. <laughs> I mean, do these wash up by themselves and then just open up, or are these just the cast... discarded is the word I'm looking for. You know, the oyster catchers, and they serve up the, um, they serve up the oysters and then just throw the shells on the beach. But there you go, that's quite nice. I'm using the pier as a foreground element. There's nothing I can do with the sky, because it's dipping behind the cloud. But I'll get a couple of shots in here, because I'll get the, um, the red hues. F7.1 at a tenth of a second. I'm going to drop the exposure compensation down to 0 0.7 just to darken that exposure. It's rather nice. <laughs> I'm seeing all sorts of things here. What I'm seeing is people need to control their dogs. It's a bit lively. Fish dog. Yeah, I'm coming right in because I want to capture the water coming and the sunlight coming through on the pier. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> I got some pictures. I'm pleased with that. Just apart from the fact that the sun's going down. Let's just get a shot of the wife boy with the red hues behind it batch of pictures then that I've just taken and I've got to get up at 4.30 in the morning haven't I <laughs> the things we do for YouTube so watch these I'll see you in the morning or well, it'll be minutes for you won't it Well now, who thought 4.30 would be a good idea? <laughs> You're shattered. I've looked outside and it's misty. I'm like, oh no. But we don't let that worry us. Because I've seen before where it's been misty. You get these orange globe. Globe? Yeah. The sun looks like an orange globe. So, in the words of Del Boy Trotter, he who dares, Rodney, he who dares. <laughs> We're going to get out there and see what we can find. See what happens, see what, if the sun breaks through the mist. Cat, cat, having a stretch. Um, 
Yeah, I've got to get my thoughts together. 4.30 in the morning. Okay, let's get out there and see if we can catch something. It's not going to happen. I am alone in the world. It's very quiet here. It is now 5.20. I can't hear a thing. It's so quiet. Apart from me <laughs> talking. We're not going to get a sunrise. I am distressed, to say the least. I had grand visions, you know, that this morning would be even finer than yesterday. But I don't know. Look at that. That's... Um, Meadows and mist. There's all this kind of foliage going on. Nice little path going down to the sea. <laughs> so I'm sorry, it's not sunrise versus sunset. Disappointment. I might get a shot or two, you know. I've never taken shots in the fog. <laughs> Let me set up, see see if I can come up with something. A blue sky. I think it's going to happen. <laughs> I can see hints of breaking in the cloud, but we're not going to get sunrise, are we? I've got a scene with the cliff and the footpath going down. So that'll be my first shot. I suppose it's nice being out without anybody around. <laughs> Yesterday it was all the happy dogs, wasn't it? And I said, yeah, getting up at four. Well, I actually got up at 4.30, so my voice is hurt. <laughs> Shot number one, then. I'm going to take in the bit of the white cliffs. Shall I do a, a wee pan out to get more of it in? That's the problem when you don't have um, a wide angle on your camera. Because I'm coming in at, well, 18. But I'll be able to crop it, so. Taking pictures in the fog. Who would do such a thing? But I might get something nice out of it. I don't do portfolios, do I? <laughs> Shot one. Shot two. A nice little panel. getting a sunrise today it's just not working but I thought I would make use of this oh, yeah I thought I'd get down but actually I think I'll get up <laughs> a jet I hear a jet we are not alone in the world I thought I was <laughs> what I'm thinking is make use of this pathway leading down to the bench. See the bench there? Come on, lock your focus in. But maybe get the um, plantage in there. Looks quite nice. Only because I've got to take a picture of something, haven't I? Uh, I thought I'd get clever and be down on level, but actually, there's no colour or anything, it's so bizarre. Let's take the shot. Four grand interests. <laughs> I chopped a bit of the tree off, so let's put the 
path a little to the right hand side of the shot. Gets the two bushes in and the footpath and the bench. Can I come right in on the bench? Yeah, I think we'll do a little um, portrait shot. Yep. Rules of thirds works well with this because I can put... See, I want to catch the bench, but suddenly I see these yellow and purple flowers. But rule of thirds put the bench on the top third. If I come any further down... It's like capturing a picture of a country walk. That'll do. It's, it's turning out not to be a sunrise photograph, isn't it? Hooray for metrics. Right, have a look at those pictures. I'm going to drive down to the coast, just see if there's anything worth taking a picture of down there, just to make the video <laughs> worthwhile, if nothing else. I don't think you're going to be learning anything here. It's just following Tudor in the day and the life of photography. At least I got some sunset pictures last night, didn't I? Right, have a look at these pictures. Well, 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 the world's waking up. <laughs> I'm waking up. I was driving home from the coast and I've got a cloud inversion. You don't often get cloud inversions in the, um, in the lowlands. You can see the mist is coming in over, um, over Wootton. Wootton is down there where I live and the cloud is, it's just crazy. It's actually lifting now, but a few seconds ago, I saw all the trees and everything, and I caught a few shots. <laughs> so this is just a bonus feature. I managed to catch a cloud inversion. <laughs> I don't know if it will be a good picture or not, but it's definitely worth capturing. Sometimes you're driving along. I'll have to do another drive-by, shoot-what-you-see video. You know, just drive around. Amazing. I caught the picture, though, so I'm quite pleased with that. I mean, there's no foreground interest or anything, but... Yeah, I'll leave you with that one. Excited. <laughs> I'll have to go up to the Highlands, get some cloud inversions, or the Cumbria Lake District. Oh, love it, love it. Right, I've got work to do. I've got some data migration to get on with, so end of this video. Proper. <laughs>